All right, welcome back everybody, and in this video, I'm going to go over the simple spawners, uh, summoner, and the spawn location, because they both kind of link together. Uh, this is one that I kind of talked about in the last video, which, in my apologies, I believe that was like two months ago, maybe even longer. Uh, things kind of came up, and well, I am now back to doing some recording today, so... You know, hopefully we can kind of knock this one out, and hopefully uh, there's some useful information for some of you out here on kind of how to use this thing, because it's, it's really cool. Um, the creativity that you can do with this is just, it's phenomenal for what you could do with your server to, like, set up, like, maybe special events. Um, you know, really have a very unique server with the use of this thing, so I've been playing around with it for a little bit, and this is what I got right here, so... I do have the simple spawner buffs on. Um, actually, you know what I can do? I will take it off so you can see exactly what a standard player would see. So, they'd come up here, and they'd have two options to summon. So, on this one, I have a crate and a yeti. And there's all this stuff that is required to be able to summon those, those creatures. Um, now, to be able to summon it, you have to put that inventory, or you have to put that stuff into the inventory. So you could move everything in here, which, what do I have? I think it's that, that, is it stone? I feel like there's something else that I'm forgetting. What else am I forgetting? Oh, thatch, element, and wood. Yeah, I know where, I think I know where all that other stuff is at. So, if you put all that in there, uh, then you could summon, and boom, you would you would create a summon. Now, you can't see it, but there's a spawn location right about here. And everything that I summon from there will get put right here. So, let me show you kind of what that looks like. We'll type in this code, which kind of activates these uh, simple spawners buffs, so you can kind of see everything and, and uh, be able to fool around. So this is the spawn location, and here is the summoner. So we'll grab another location, just for fun. But here's the location, so anything would spawn right here, from here. Now let's create something to spawn. So when I hold E now, you see that there's all these other options. We'll come up in here to settings, and this is where uh, you kind of set everything up. So I've got two already set up the crate and the Yeti. The crates are really easy to do. Um, if you come up here and just go to select loot crate, it gives you a big list and you can just make your way down. I mean, you can do artifacts, um, all different all different types of things. Um, let's do an aberration red cave crate, shall we? So when I put that this one away, now it just came a number. So this number is just something the system uses to know what loot crate to actually uh, spawn. So we'll come up here to add creature, and now we have a third creature. This would be the same thing you would do if you're adding an actual creature. So when I added the Yeti, what I did is I had to find the blueprint location uh, for that, and then type that into this area. Um, a nice easy place to go to is, I believe it was fandom arc or arcfandom.com. I went on there, and in the right column of the list of animals, they, gl they give the blueprint location. If you're using a modded uh, dino, uh, most, if not all, modders will list the blueprint location on their workshop uh, page. It might be into the like discussions tab up top, but if you go in there, uh, they should list the actual blueprint for whatever custom animal that you're trying to put in. Uh, but you just put in that location in here, and then you go to add creature, and then that would uh, give a link to the spawner to be able to pull that creature from from the system. So that's uh, that's really cool. Um, you can put in, you know, how many do you want to summon for creatures? You could put in the level range. Um, you know, is it going to be claimable as a baby? You know, number to summon. Uh, up here, you have you know creatures. If it's a creature, is it actually tameable? And then you can broadcast the notification. So if this is selected, um, whenever a individual comes up to summon, everybody on the server will get that notification. You know, that could be really cool for if you have like a globally summoned, like, I don't know, uh, 
a boss or something like that, then everybody on their nose that, oh, you know, hey, we've got, we got something that's going to spawn somewhere. Let's get ready for it. Uh, you could also put a despawn time from 0 to 720 uh, minutes, which is, uh, I'm not even going to think about how long that is. It's like six hours or something. Um, so you could put like a cool boss, you know, boss event where it's out for two hours and, you don't know, you spawn like 20 of them across the globe or in specific locations, whatever you want to do. But um, you definitely have options to be able to kind of fool around with this. All right. So last thing down here is this fill list of required items from inventory. So this is where you would set up like, okay, I want specific things um, to be required in order to spawn whatever it is on here. To do that, you have to put in, let's just apply and save, whatever you want to be a requirement to summon, you have to first put in here into the inventory of the summoner. And so let's say that somebody needs to have all four of these. They need to have some hide, some metal, some meat, and some stone. So once when you have that in there, you come up here to the settings, and then you go fill list of required items from inventory. So that takes everything that was in there and now makes it a requirement. The nice thing is, though, you can change the amounts. So let's just say somebody just needs to have one of each of these in order to summon the red uh cave crate so you do that hit apply and then you hit save so now if we come up here to summon here's the requirements so one metal one raw meat one hide and one stone and then you could summon and then you get it so now if you wanted to summon to a actual specific location you have this linked spawn location so let's let's undo it this is normally what you would see. These would be your options. You could go global, a specific radius, um, and then do you want to see that radius you know, if you're trying to set it up to just a, a specific, you know, area. Um, if you wanted to a a actual spawner, you need to go to linked spawn locations, and whatever you place down will now become highlighted up here. So we select that. And then now, whatever we spawn will go straight to that area. So hit apply and save. Let's summon this thing. And if we come over here, this thing kind of makes a whole bunch of noises and does all that. And then, boom, there's our crate. So we could access it. Uh, not too bad, we got a couple things. We'll take it, and then it's gone. So, if you don't want to keep these numbers on here, you can rechange it. So if you're like really building something complicated, um, let's set this to just tester. So all I did was just hit E on it, and now I renamed it. So if I come back over to this summoner, and I go into settings, link spawn locations, there's tester. We will re-highlight it, and now we're good to go. So we'll save it, and now everything that summons from there will also go there. So, I do have another one down over here. And this one has an otter and a white beacon. And it's set to just go, you know, within a, a times five radius of this location. Uh, but let's say we want to link. We can link to that one. Otherwise, another thing that we can do is let's set down a couple more spawners, shall we? All right, so we've got a couple spawners. Let's go into settings, go to spawn locations. Let's select all three of them. And let's bump the number of otters to 15. Yeah, let's try 15. All right, so we'll hit apply. We'll hit save. So now if we summon, I think there's some meat in there. Nope, uh, I forgot to add meat to it. Let's get into the inventory. Let's add a little bit in there. And then go to summon. Uh, let's go summon that. So, summoning 15 otters. Now it should random certain amounts on each of these spawners. So the one, the two, and the third one down over there. Look, we've got two there. Well, we are just completely surrounded by adorable little otters. And there might be like one or two up here. Yeah, here's kind of one, two. I think that's from an earlier test I got. I don't think you made it that far. 
But I thought that was kind of cool. So you could set up a bunch of spawners and then put in a bunch of animals and uh, just have it randomize, you know, wherever they're going to go. And then it's kind of like a, uh, it's kind of like a hunt. You know, you could do a, uh, um, some type of like hunting event and you've got to find all the otters or, or something cool. Um, but you know, the, the options are completely endless for what you could do and just be able to have fun with your server. So uh, hopefully you guys found this, uh, you found this useful. Um, if you could make sure you uh, comment down below any other ideas for future mods that you'd like to see me review, anything that I should just check out for fun, whether it's Ark or any other game. Uh, if you like the video, please hit that like button. Um, it, it, it definitely gives me, you know, kind of, uh, encouragement to keep building these things every time I get a comment and a, uh, and a like. So it, it definitely means a lot and it definitely helps, you know, kind of YouTube throw my videos out there, which I would definitely appreciate it. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoy the rest of your day. As always, keep it simple and I'll see you guys in the next adventure. Take it easy. Bye. Go, go play around with these otters. These things are freaking adorable. Look at you. Oh no, don't hit that button. Oh no. I don't want to do that. That's the button. Yeah, look at you. You're freaking adorable. <laughs>